Hi, my name is Baron Kirby. Welcome to the Cash Out Lab. For those of you that engaged with our first video last week, thank you very much. And I hope you see improvements and changes as a result. This week, we'll be covering the social aspects of technology, including wearables and in Internet of Things. And this leads us into a discussion on smart cities, smart communities, and how Gloucester is putting an infrastructure to make this a reality. Finally, Amanda, Joe and Jasmine all went to the After Hours event at Bristol last night. We have the highlights to show you for a bit of a laugh. Some of the research we've been doing here at K-Sharp has been around, been around wearables, Internet of Things and smart cities and how they are inextricably linked between each other if they're going to be a success. Wearable technology is really that baseline idea about how we're getting data from individuals and really understanding how they behave and act on a constant basis. For us, this has been around what we call Project Meters, which has really been looking at how people uh, interact with data and understand how their data is being used and potentially abused by people in a way that, that perhaps wasn't intended. We're also doing a lot of user identification now, so using our phones to identify ourselves, but also using our biology, um, so our heart rate and fingerprints, in, or, in order to identify who we are. Some people are getting concerned that we are becoming our device, rather than actually being individuals in our own right. So you can go and be identified by a bit of uh, machinery, but this is just a new way of doing things that is possibly more dynamic. What I'm really interested in is the social aspects of this. Um, social, the, the technology and social media have given us real power to be able to talk and interact like never before. But there are still a lot of people who are nervous about how this is going on in the future. And it is really these people that we've got to work with to make sure that we get, harness the full power of where technology can take us. The biggest driver at the moment is in the health industry. Um, the wearable technology side of, of health, being able to monitor what we do with our bodies, has really, really exploded and is, is continuing to do so. There is really no end in sight right now. The actual technology behind wear, wearables and what we're monitoring is relatively simplistic, but the way that we can interpret the data that's coming in has allowed us an insight into the way our bodies work like never before on a very personal basis. As an example, 71% of Americans say wearable technologies improve their health. This comes in two or three phases. Firstly, just that awareness of what your body is actually doing, how many steps you're taking a day, and there is more technology that's coming through that is allowing us to monitor the, um, our hydration levels, or what our heart rate is doing on a on, on a minute by minute basis, and how many calories we're consuming. We're also using the technology to enable us to be motivated to go and do something. So we're using the wearables to encourage us to go out for a run, um, to go out and do some exercise, to go and do some cycling. But the final piece in this is also just by the fact that we're investing in technology means that we are using, tech, using the technology as a motivator and as a prompt. Um, so we're investing in our own health in a way that hasn't really been possible before. Another statistic is that 46% of Brits say that wearable technology has boosted their confidence. This is quite a, an, an interesting statistic. Most of it is based around the fact that we ha now have a space to express opinions without any filters. So using um, videos uh, to, allow, to allow us to record our opinions, allowing us to track where we're going and, and what we're doing and give um, news technology to check into places and say what we feel about them without any sort of moderation. It allows us also to identify what our personal space is. So people allowing to, using uh, wearables and phones, to define our own personal space, even though that's in the virtual world. But finally, it's also allowed um, a sense of safety within our physical space, allowing us to track where our friends and loved ones are and for us, for us to be able to message people if there's any issues and problems. 
you can do this just by using simple messaging and and like say the iPhone Friends app. But there are also apps out there to help us with personal safety. So an, a really good local example is the Holy Guard, produced by the Holy Guards I Trust. This allows if you're going to go and meet with somebody that perhaps you don't know through some sort of dating or or whatever, that um, when you're about to go meet somebody, you can actually set. A th- um, set the idea that you're going to go and meet somebody, let loved ones know and then when you finished then you can also tell them that you finished and you're on your way home. It also has alerting mechanisms that are not obvious so if you do get into trouble um, in some way then um, it allows you to alert people that you need help. But it does this in a way that is quite um, secretive as well so actually you're the person who is causing the problems doesn't necessarily know that they've been alerted to and don't do anything rash so it allows us to have that that physical self-confidence to perhaps um, go and engage with people that are knowing that, that we've been um, that you've got a backup there and people know what you're doing there is also this idea about actually our smartphones killing conversation ideas when you go out for uh, go out for meals there's so many people who are commenting that they look around the room and see people engaging with their phones rather than engaging with the people who are um, sat opposite the table from them and I do think that this is a an interesting um, notion because 89% of mobile phone owners have said that their phones that they've used their phones during their last social gathering but they weren't necessarily happy about doing so they just feel compelled to do so 82% of those adults felt that the way that they use their phones in social settings hurt the conversation. The flip side of that can also be true though that actually the, these phones um, are used in a way to share and broaden the audience that you're with. So it's interesting to see how technology is integrating into social and physical spaces. Lots of data that is is developed from how from us wearing this stuff allows us to distribute and d- distribute that data and use it for the integration of Internet of Things applications. So if we are tracking where people are going, we can then use them to know where where the most common routes are, where people are congregating, and, and really use them as, as a positive aspect. But it's, it's about people wearing it and sharing that data in the first place. A lot of people are not necessarily trusting of sharing data, Um, many particularly with let's say more government and official organisations because they don't necessarily trust what is going to happen with it but also I think people are using cloud applications and using them to uh, monitor exercise and putting them into cloud applications not necessarily realising that how that data is going to be used because fundamentally we don't like checking uh, terms and conditions when when there's a lot of small print we click OK because we want to get on and use the application there is a risk there though that you're sharing um, things like your heart rate which might seem quite innocuous but other companies are making profit off that that's not necessarily a bad thing uh, but you do, I think people just need to be more aware of how their data is being used when we're looking at who is actually engaging with this type of thing, um, millennials are growing up with this technology and they see that as, as, as a commonplace thing to do now. And it is becoming the fact that community is ubiquitous. It is online and offline. When we talk about um, an online and offline persona, these things are becoming more and more integrated, more and more as one. So these, this divide is becoming very blurred. And this is quite key to Internet, and smart, uh, sorry, Internet of Things and smart cities. Because if they don't engage with people and actually get the vast majority of using them, they simply won't work because we won't trust and we won't engage with them. Therefore, we've got to understand and get people to be wearing uh, this type of technology and engaging with the technology. At the moment, it is not very aesthetically pleasing in many cases. So Google Glass was a really good example. Um, It was a device that was almost uh, visually obtrusive. People were uh, nervous about people wearing it. And fundamentally, you've got to get into this idea, what's in it for me? Why, Why should I have to wear this piece of kit? Why should I feel compelled to wear this piece of kit rather than just being... Um, a thing for the geeks. So where are we going next? I think Gloucester is a really good example um, of a Pathfinder city and how we can try and use our local communities to start putting these things together. So Gloucester has invested in what I would term a backbone infrastructure. It is integrated 4G, Wi-Fi and CCTV in quite an innovative way in the city centre which has since been rolled out to other areas. 
they've also supplemented that by experimenting with augmented reality ideas, such as investing in Pokemon Go. Um, and what they did with that was add more poke stops at strategic locations, cafes, local um, local business areas, to encourage more users to come and have a go. Many local businesses saw a rise in footfall as a result, as a, as a direct result of having poke stops. They're relatively small but crucial trials that can encourage people, and I hope to see the loss of taking more of these ideas and running with them in the future. I really would encourage you to go and look at the website of Jason Smith, the CEO of Marketing Gloucester, and see what he had to say to the University of Oxford recently about what Gloucester can do and why Gloucester is ideally uh, and strategically uh, placed to engage as a Pathfinder city. So to wrap this bit up, I think there are technology accelerators that are looking at the technological aspects, but there are scant few people looking at how to encourage trust in technology and seeing, making sure that we can engage with people moving forward. The challenge for society is social inclusion. We must look at how to encourage engagement, otherwise we can have all that technology we want. But without the vast majority of the population engaging with it, it's going to be useless and a waste of money, and we won't see the full benefits of what we can achieve. Okay, so last night you went to Ad Bristol mm-hmm. uh, for an after hours event. What was it about? Uh, well, the theme of the after hours event was love, because it's Valentine's Day, obviously. Mm-hmm. And there were lots of different love themed activities, and we cut down both sides of the heart to open up the cavities and we saw the tendons and the valves and ours had a blood clot which was a little bit gross but Joe dealt with that. So this was about Valentine's Day and you were cutting up hearts. I think we should probably move on from that one. (laughs) What else did you do do while you were there? Uh, We made origami hearts in the tinker section and the helper, advisor there, told us that a lot of the um, satellites in the sky and the spacecrafts are based on origami because they can be folded up really, really, really small and then expand bigger when they're in orbit. So I guess that's relevant because when you send um, satellites up, they have to go into a really small payload package on the top of a rocket. Yeah. And so then they can be... Oh, that's very... didn't know that. Mathematical. Um... So was it quite busy then? Was it so? It's an adults only, more or more adults, yeah. more, more adults experience. So was was there many people there? There was a lot of people there. Okay. I think it was probably full to capacity. Um, there was, I'd say, an equal number of men to women. A that's lot really, of couples. Yeah, that, I mean that's really good because obviously one of the problems that we think exist in STEM subjects, so the, the scientific and engineering subjects, mm-hmm. is the distinct lack of women involved. And obviously, you guys, you. Um, Amanda and Joe went last night, so the, the female contingent of the team. Um, do you think the, these sort of events are, are good for encouraging people, uh, encouraging women in particular yeah, to come and get involved? Um, I think a lot more women should be inzo- involved with science and the sciences. Um, there were a lot of women there last night, and they're all getting involved and, well, I think, enjoying what they were experiencing. 